Uh, we're here in the town of Reading, and we're going to be burning down here south on an established buffer here along this ag field. They're going to put the back fire in right along here. This particular area is part of our quail initiative. We're going to start with a burn. That'll help us remove the uh, thatch of the native grass, allow some space for the existing forbs and stuff to reestablish. And by burning these, these uh, fields off, we're gonna maintain them as that nesting cover that we really need for, for the birds. Kansas is 97% privately owned. We are reliant on volunteer participation. Those biologists are going out to work with private landowners. In Kansas, agriculture and conservation have actually paired very nicely, and the wildlife really benefited from that. Well, we are here in Kansas to address bob whites and cropped landscapes because Kansas has been a national example of how to do cropland conservation right, to address wildlife, soil, and water quality all at the same time with the same money. Other states can do the same thing that Kansas has provided such good national leadership for by relying on native vegetation and more natural, ecologically appropriate conservation practices. This place has great potential for, for quail. Look at the native grass re-sprouting here. So Randy, you've retired this field from cropping, put it into the Conservation Reserve Program, right. primarily to stop soil erosion and improve the water quality in the creek below. Because this place has more potential for, for quail and other wildlife than any of our other places. I'm Randy Rogers. Uh, I'm a retired wildlife biologist. I uh, worked for the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks for 32 years, and now I'm uh, managing our own land. What I've tried to do is take into account good soil conservation, good water conservation, good wildlife conservation, and still have it be uh, relatively easy to be farmed. Farmers, of course, their top priority, understandably, is, is making a profit to, to uh, keep their farming operation going, provide for their families, and provide food for all of us. Most of them, at least those that are interested in wildlife, are willing to do something. But the difficult part is that they're not necessarily willing to do everything that you need to pull it all together. So what kind of wildlife would you see in a filter strip such as this? Um, quail, uh, turkey. And this filter strip is, is designed and laid out between the cropped area and the stream that lies adjacent. And so most of our practices that we enroll in the Conservation Reserve Program are grassland practices um, that provide shelter for wildlife, that protect from wind erosion, that protect from water erosion. But it goes beyond that, too, because there is an economic benefit. So the public is willing to enter into a long-term contract with a landowner that's willing to offer their land into a program for multiple years. Most of our acres, over 98% of our acres that are enrolled in this program go with native grasses. And it's benefited the native species. My name is Rod Winkler. I'm with the Kansas Farm Service Agency. We are at the uh, Byron Walker Wildlife Area. 4,700 acres of uh, prairie uh, and river bottom. Within Kansas, uh, we've had some big changes over the last couple of years. Uh, we have a new initiative now. It's the Habitat First Initiative, and we're really promoting a uh, simplified marketing to private landowners so that they know that we have these resources available to them, uh, whether that's technical assistance, uh, just in the form of what can you do on your property to better manage it uh, for habitat, uh, and species specific. If they're interested in quail, we can tailor it to that. I'm very optimistic about uh, uh, habitat improvements. The grass is starting to outcompete the wildflowers and forbs and weedy type plants. Uh, the, the disking is going to set back that grass and reduce the competition, allow those other native warm season grasses to really take hold and provide that brood structure that we're really lacking in a lot of places. But along this portion, along the, along the trees there, we're going to plant a new grass buffer. Quail are mobile, they can fly, but generally their home range is within uh, a few miles. And so um, if you can provide all everything that they need within a small area, you can contain a covey of quail on a relatively small area. 
This is a center pivot irrigation system that runs in circles around a field, irrigating, in this case, alfalfa. And so when you put a round, circular, rotating pivot inside a square field, you get the unirrigated corners, a prime opportunity to create habitat. So if you look at where we're at, we've had really good success with the, the CRP pivot corners out in this area to provide that additional habitat. Quail right now have responded very well to the conditions that have been on the landscape. We're making headway in getting the message out. Uh, a lot of people still uh, don't understand that this landscape has changed from whenever we had lots of, of birds. There's a lot of other benefits beyond just the quail. It's, a lot of times we're targeting quail, we have a lot of other species that are benefiting from these same management practices. I guess uh, wildlife people have to be hopeful. That's what keeps us all going. We're all hopeful that we can make a difference on our own little places or on a few places where we're working with landowners that are concerned.